Good day, folks. It's Sony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today I want to cover something that I've actually used for a while, but very rarely ever spoke of. It's the actual Windows Resource Manager. Uh, every version of Windows has a different variation on this, but, but it's there, trust me. Um, I'm going to start with the basics. The way to get there is through the Task Manager, which I'm sure everybody's done before by Control Alt Delete or right clicking on your actual status bar and, and bringing it up that way. This is what you usually end up with, and you, a list of apps that are running. Uh, some people go as far as look at the processes or services, but here's uh, where you get the real bang for your buck. You go to Performance, and this is going to show you obviously CPU performance and memory usage, which is fine. But this is the button I want to use, Resource Monitor. So if you don't know how to get to the Resource Monitor app, you can always do it this way. You can also just hit the uh, orb, the start orb, and, and type Resource Mon as well. But th that's typically how um, I end up getting there, because I'm using the screen anyways. So what I'm going to do is just close that off, and this is what I end up with. So this is pretty neat. From the overview screen, it's going to show you all the, they call them images. You can just think of them as apps if you want, or services. Um, the PID is the process ID. And this is just a number it gives it every time when something's going to run. It gets this number. It's, it's never going to be the same twice, relatively speaking. Uh, and then obviously if it's running, thread, CPU, that good stuff. But if you want to troubleshoot something and work on an actual problem, you probably want to find out why things are slow. And, and one reason why it might be slow is something could be generating a bunch of traffic. And one way to figure that out is to capture a bunch of packets or turn SNMP on. But there's an easier way to do that. From the network portion of this pane here, you can see the image name, Spool, Postgres, Chrome, um, tells you the IP address that it's talking to. So for example, a printer uh, could be connected to my machine via the network. Uh, Chrome could be talking to something out on the network and this is bytes per second send which is like a transmit obviously receive which is receive <laughs> and bytes per second so bytes is kind of important because it's bytes not bits so for all the network people in the world remember bits and bytes aren't the same eight bits and a byte just generically speaking I'm not going to split that hair right now so if you, for example if you had 10 bytes per second it would be 80 bits per second that type of thing so right now everything's pretty quiet. If I want to concentrate on an app specifically, I could just simply go down my list here and go find something, anything. Uh, I'll give you a good example, uh, Chrome for example. So you see multiple instances of Chrome here. So if I wanted to find out how it was behaving, I could actually check a whole bunch of these Chromes off. And every time I check them, you see the way it kind of looks like it disappears? It really didn't disappear, just put them at the top here. That's all it did. Uh, and now you can see all the Chrome which are flagged, which means now it's filtered. So any physical paths on my machine, so like a temp folder, a log file, that sort of thing, it's all going to be flagged here as well. Now here's the cool thing when you're using an app, it also tells you the response time, and this is to the disk system. See that? So when you get into performance measurement, um, it's kind of interesting. I always throw this number, this generic number, on a, a 10 megabit Ethernet network. Uh, with a 1518 byte frame or packet, it takes about 1.21 milliseconds, give or take, just 1.2, sure, that's good enough. And that gives you an idea of how long it takes to transmit that on the wire, the transmit speed on just 10 meg, not 100, not gig. So when you actually see an app hammering your drive and the response time's 50 milliseconds, I've seen 150 milliseconds, just disk, not network, disk. This is a great way of figuring that out. So you check these things off, filters it out as you can see, and over here it's showing me a little line as to how busy it is. So what I've done here is with my Chrome browser, I just went to this uh, Google Plus community, funny pictures and videos, because they've got these little animated GIFs and they've got pictures and all that good stuff. What I'm going to do is a Control Shift 5, which loads the page and uh, kind of uh, wants a fresh page, kind of ignores what temp files I may have had for those images. So now that I've done that, if I take a look here, you can see the spikes here on the network getting data. You could see the CPU got a little busier here, and you could even see the disk access kind of spiked up a bit as well. If you want to dig in more, you can always hit the CPU button. It'll show you, uh, again, all the CPU related handles, services, and stuff related to what you're looking at. Memory, same kind of thing here, how much memory is being committed and with the uh, appropriate PID. And you can even see here, in this case free, I've got nice lots of free memory, which is good, good to know. 
disk, obviously, what's being read from your disk, written to your disk, and that response time I was telling you about again. So this is uh, actually very, very helpful. And lastly, we've got network. And the network's kind of neat because it tells me Chrome, the process ID, the local address, which is mine, and the remote IP address that we're using. So uh, I can see where I'm going remotely and packet loss and latency is automatically being documented for you as well. So there you go. Just a little walk through the resource monitor. Uh, hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.